Hello guys, welcome to our channel once again. So today we are going to talk about CI/CD process for Azure Data Bricks, which is pretty new concept, and there are not too many good material available on the internet. I tried to search a lot. There are many things I found, but none of them were matching to my requirement. Then I stumbled upon to a very good uh, uh, blog, uh, which I can give you uh, the link for. I went through all the content and step by step guide and the best part was that it also had a repository built up already with some sample uh, script which I took and implemented it and it was really good for a beginner like me. So I am going to share that experience with all of you. So let's get started. So what are the things we need for uh, this to accomplish? So uh, of course you need an Azure Databricks instance already created and if you have not created you can see it, how it, you can do it then you need to configure a DevOps uh, a repository with your Azure Databricks. This is also pretty new. They have recently changed the way repository was created. Earlier you had to do it based on the, each notebook. Now you can configure the entire repository that also will have a look. Then you need to have an Azure Key Vault because you need to save your token in a Key Vault in a more secure way rather than having it uh, stored in your uh, DevOps pipeline. And of course, Azure Databricks token, which we'll see how you can create it if you don't know about it. And the few sample notebooks which you'll test for the, this deployment. Okay, let's see uh, step by step. So you can search for Azure Databricks in your Azure portal. Uh, should give you this uh, a screen you can provide your resource group which are resource group you are to create you have to give a workspace name and there are not too many things to configure here so i'm assuming that you already know how to create this and i already have a database created so quickly i'll jump on to that and i'll show you how you are going to create a azure token so uh, this is how your Azure Databricks instance will look in your portal you have to click on the launch workspace it will launch a workspace so I already have a workspace launched yeah, here. Yeah. So here you can see all the tabs. We are not going to the details here. You can have another video for that. But to create Azure Databricks token, you need to go to admin console. And admin console, uh, sorry, I think I'm in the wrong place. Go to, go to user settings. Yeah, in the user settings, you can see there is an option called generate new token. So you can give any comment and then you can create a token i've already created this so i'm not creating here it's a lifetime uh how many number of days you want this to be active so if you don't want this to expire you can remove this and you can generate the token. so once a token is generated you have to save it in key vault so here is my uh, key vault which is already created and the secrets so there are two important things we need to configure uh, for this purpose one is the host name and the other is a token name so host name how how you know the host name is host name is nothing but the unique url which gets created every time you create a new database instance so if i show you the sample one uh, this is my database host name so this is going to be unique for everyone okay so you need this uh, so that uh, as you knows that which database it has to deploy Okay, and the second thing is the token which you have generated just now. The token you need to save it with a given name. So just remember these names for these two. We are going to use it in the later steps. Now let's quickly see the repository how you are going to configure it. So here you have an option for repository, and you can add a repository. Now I have already added the repository. Now I'll show you quickly. Uh, right now I have configured a dev branch to work on. Uh, let it load. Yeah, here you can also change the repository if you want to uh, work on any feature branch which you should for a development purpose. You will create a new branch, feature branch, and then you will uh, configure that. Right? So what we'll do is for time being, um, I am going to make some changes in my this branch, the dev branch, which is my working branch right now. So right now, uh, sorry, uh, I can show you how my uh, structure looks like. So within the shared, you have two different folders. Within this, I have say one, uh, one file, which is a Python file. Now, what I'll do is uh, I will create another folder or the subdirectory within this. So let's go ahead and create a folder. So common. So I may have to create some files which are common across, right? So I want to put some files here. 
and I'll create another file. This time I'll create a file for Scala. So right now within Hello Workspace we have a fold we have a file which is directly under this and we also have a folder within that we have another file. Now you can see how it looks like in the repository. I'll show you that. So currently you can see in my repository you see only one file which is one dot py because the other file which we added we have only added in the database. We have not yet pushed that change here. And at the same time, I also have one more file created, which is not a Python or Scala or SQL file. It's a CSV file. I'll tell you why I have added it. So now what we'll try to do is the file which we have created here, we have to push it to our repository. So what you need to do is you need to go here back to your repository. Oh, sorry. I think we added it in the wrong place. Uh, we added in the uh, workspace. What we have to do is we should create this here. So I'll recreate this common and within the common, I'll add a notebook. And this is my scalp. Now I want to push this change. Uh, let's put some command as well. So print to within repository. We we'll go here. So it has identified that we added a new file. So I'll put some comment add a file, commit and push. So it is not yet uh, uh, matured enough because there are some functionality which has not worked. I created a file in the repository and tried to pull it here, but that wasn't working. It is still work in progress. So now we have added a file. Let's go back and see here. I'll refresh. Yeah, now you can see the folder is created, a file is created. Now we have two files. One is Python, one is Scala, one is CSV. So this is how you usually work with the repository in database. Now as a third step, we need to understand all the files which you need for the DevOps operation. We are going to use actually a Databricks CLI because Databricks CLI provides you all the APIs which is needed, which is a command line uh, tool actually, and that has been used as part of your shell scripts. So I have found a very good uh, uh, content which I told you, right? So I'll show you how it is structured, and then then we'll go through each file one by one. That what is the significance of all of them. So here um, in my repository, I have already added all the files. So what you can do is you can create a separate folder for keeping all this build related files. You should not uh, actually mix up. That will create a lot of confusion. So what I have done is I have created a hello workspace. So all my notebooks, which is required for your processing purpose goes inside hello workspace. Within that, you can create multiple subdirectories. That is fine. But all your build pipeline related things should be outside. Now we are going to focus mainly on two things. One is you're creating the cluster for the first time and what is what will be the configuration of the cluster and then the second part will be importing the workspace. So when we are creating the cluster at the same time we will also uh, cover installing libraries. So there will be multiple libraries which you would need at the time of your uh, uh, production runs. right? You might have uh, imported your libraries at the time of development that also you want to Deploy. So we'll see one by one. Okay, so you know that the YAML file is the driving file for your DevOps operations, right? So YAML file is a file which actually defines your step-by-step -step workflow. So in the first one, the build cluster.yaml, so the first part what you see is a trigger configuration that it is configured for master branch, and if there are any changes in these two files. So that path is included. So if there are any changes in these two, it will trigger it automatically. But you can uh, actually modify this based on your needs or you can even remove it if you don't want the CI. CI. Now, stages part. So it actually divides the whole process in multiple stages. So it is a single stage process. So you can actually uh, avoid this also. But this is good to have. We are telling that this is a stage adult dev and the display name is development. Okay. Now the important part here is the variable group. So if you, then whenever you configure Azure DevOps, you can create some kind of variables or parameter which you want to change at the runtime. So rather than creating hard-coded values here, we define a variable group. So right now we have used two different uh, variables which we already shown in the key vault, right? We configure the host and the token. 
or how you can use those post and token name which is in the key vault to your YAML file that you can do through pipeline libraries. In the pipeline libraries, I will show you. I have a single variable group created. In this variable group, you can create it, or if you already have it, you can modify it. So here you get options to give it a name, and then you can actually give values directly here, or you can import it from keyword. So when you want to import it from keyword, you have to enable this. And now you will give a link that which keyword you want to get value from. Right now it's getting from my subscription and this keyword. So how you will add keys here? So if you when you click on add here, it will list down all the secret which you have available in your keyword. So right now we are using only two, so we are importing only these two. If you want more than that, you can do that. So Databricks host and Databricks token, and make sure that this name which you are you are giving here, the same name should be using your YAML files. Let's go back again to our YAML file. So that's the importance of your group. So once you have de defined your variable groups, anything, all the variable which is available in this group can be accessed here by giving this uh, syntax. Okay. Now, this is a shell script which has been configured. So in the first task, what it is doing, it is going to configure your CLI. Because if any API is trying to use or access your data with instance, it has to know the URL as well as the token. This is more of a, your authorization. You are authorizing this process to access your database and make changes. So this is always going to be your first step. Make sure that this script path is actually correct based on your relative uh, file path. So if you are keeping it say in this folder and now you are going to access this SH file which is again in the same directory we have given the full path. So if you are uh, accessing it, if you have created some other kind of hierarchy, you need to make these changes here. Okay. Now uh, there are two more steps which we are doing. First is to delete the cluster. In case you already have the cluster created, you can delete it and then you can recreate the cluster. Now what are things you need to create a cluster? You need to provide the configuration of those cluster. Now those cluster configurations are saved in different files which we are mentioning it as config.cluster.json here you have defined that what would be the spark version what would be the node type what is your uh, sq which you are using okay and so all the configuration which you do at the time of creating a uh, node uh, sorry cluster in the database all those things are saved here so anytime if you have to make changes in your configuration you can do it directly from this file so now let's go ahead and see this uh, cell script so in this step, it is going to create your cluster. In this cluster uh, cell script, what it is doing is, uh, we are passing a cluster name, whatever desired cluster name you have, and then actually it is replacing your cluster name because if you see the JSON file, uh, you already have a cluster name defined here, right? so that will get replaced. So that will get replaced and it will create a different file, a new file, here from uh, uh, sorry from here so it is going to create a new file which will be used now the next step it is using your database cli command to create and as an input it is passing this json file and as an output it's getting cluster id which will get created so this is a very simple partial script which is being called from uh, build cluster so you will notice here the argument hello cluster, this is going to be your cluster name. So if you want to change the name, you can change it. So once the cluster is created, then the next thing is to install libraries. So in this step, it is installing the library again using uh, a shell command or the shell file. And as an argument, we are again passing the cluster name. Now this cluster name should always match with this. So if you have created a cluster name uh, with something else and passing a different cluster name here, it will fail. Now let's go and see what is written in the library. So there are uh, Databricks uh, CLI again available for installing the libraries. So few of them are used here. So you can exactly take it as it is and you can change the package and the location which you want to install and it will work as is. So this is all about you creating the cluster and installing library. Now as a second part we will see how you can 
uh, create a new workspace with importing all your notebook. So for that we have a different YAML file and the reason why you have to split this is because you might not create a cluster all the time. There will be many times that you will only want to deploy your few notebooks or the changes in the notebook. So you don't have to re-trigger the complete process of creating cluster and libraries. You can only trigger a pipeline which is configured for importing notebook. Again the same structure here, um, the trigger part for CI CD is stages. And only difference you would see is this time we are calling a Databricks workspace import. Uh, again, uh, caution, you have to call Databricks CLA configuration again because because it's a split pipeline. This is again a new pipeline which you are running. Before you do any operations on your Databricks workspace, you have to configure it again passing by your uh, token and postname. Now in the workspace import file, if you go. Uh, it again uses a Databricks CLI command which is Databricks workspace import directory. So you have to uh, have an uh, import directory uh, file path and where you are going to deploy it. So this subdirectory is nothing but the folder name which you want to give in your workspace in Azure Databricks workspace. So again word of caution here this path should exactly match with your path in the repository otherwise you may get error. And if you want to move, if you want to know more about the Databricks CLI commands, uh, Databricks has a very extensive documentation around this. Uh, like you can see here, uh, the repository CLI, run CLI, library CLI, job CLI. So they have the Databricks CLI commands for uh, performing multiple operations. So these are the operations actually being used in our DevOps operation. Okay. Now we have understood the structure of our, uh, all the files in the pipeline and we have also understood the importance of each file, right? How, how it has to be configured, what all details should be there, where you have to make the changes, everything we cover. Now let's move on and create a pipeline and see the demo how it is going to deploy. So uh, what I'll do is I'll create a new pipeline, do I have already created it, but let's start from fresh, uh, scratch say new pipeline. New pipeline. You have to select Azure repository with YAML. I'll select my uh, repository and I already have a YAML file, right? So you have to select existing Azure pipeline. Now my YAML files are still in dev branch. So I'll select dev branch and I'll select cluster. So this pipeline is going to create a cluster and install library. Let's say continue and let it load. Now I can see uh, my file correctly here and say run. So now it has started running. Uh, okay, yeah. So when you're running the pipeline for the first time, you will have to provide permission. Click on this, say permit. Now let it run. So I already have a cluster created from my previous testing. So let it be. Uh, let's see that it is uh, deleting it and then recreating it. So now it has started. It's checking out database. Now it is in delete step. I think both are done. Okay, delete is done and the create is in process. Okay, create is done. Install Python libraries dependencies is done. Okay, now it is starting. Let's see the libraries as well. Yeah, so these are the sample libraries which I, which it has installed and you can see the name hello cluster one one more thing uh, anytime you are trying to install a library you have to make sure that your cluster is not in terminated state even if it is not started that is fine but it should be in progress in progress or in started mode if it is terminated then the library install is in okay. so it is successfully completed it has created a cluster now we'll test the second part of it. 
again I will go to Before we run, uh, we will see here, so we already have these files created, so we will remove it first, so that we can see the difference. I am going to move. Okay. Right now, we have this file available in the repository, but not in the workspace. Now, let's go back and rerun it. Or run it. Okay. So, let it execute. Okay, so it is completed. Now I'll go back and see. Yeah. yeah, now you can see the file is created again, and folder is there, and file is here. So, yeah, if you remember, uh, we had added one more file called foo.csv, and you notice that that has not been deployed because the way Databricks has designed this is that uh, it only deploys the relevant file like which has extensions of Scala or Python or SQL. So, anything more, uh, other than what is configured there, they don't deploy, so which is actually a good thing. So with this, I'll conclude this video. Thanks for watching and guys, it took me a lot of time actually to find a best solution for this. It took me days and days, but once I found this, actually it was really helpful.